Welcome back to my channel, Mally of MLA Artistry, here today to share how I clean my makeup kit as well as just some sanitary measures that I take. Before we jump into this tutorial, please hit the like and subscribe button found below. This is the most efficient way I have found to clean my brushes, my products, all of that, so I'm sharing it all with you. Enjoy. First, I wanted to share some information and answer those questions because I think a lot of people, like you don't realize what goes into being a makeup artist, a professional makeup artist. And what differentiates you, my biggest concern is people not cleaning properly because that is part of your service. Therefore, I thought, why not make a video about it to help those who may be newer to this, but also to educate the clients on part of what you're paying for with the service. Yes. You're paying for the application. Yes, you're paying for the professionalism of the person. And yes, you are also paying for the cleanliness and the maintenance of a makeup kit. I'm gonna get into a few scientific details. I also am gonna post the links below, like some of the articles I referenced, so that way you can fact check me um, if you feel like, oh, that can't be real, right? Question one, can you contract the cold, flu virus, strep, and herpes from lipsticks? Yes, that's why you don't use the same lipstick. That's why you don't double dip product. I know that's not what everybody wants to hear, but it is true. That is why it's super important to go to someone who utilizes their products properly and does not double dip and cross contaminate. And I'm gonna get to that because actually you would be surprised at how many people do it. I was an extra on a TV show years back and the lady, the makeup artist who was on set and working with the celebrities, she had like a palette concocted with like different lip shades. She was walking around touching up people's lips. She was touching up the celebrity's lips. She was touching up the extras, like the people just filling the room. And yes, yeah, she changed her applicator, but there were times when she would dip into it, she would apply it. Oh, I need more. She would use the same applicator and dip back into the lipstick and then go back. That is cross-contamination. You have transferred that person's bacteria to your product. Now, everybody else is exposed to that particular bacteria. Everyone has different skin microflora. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but I do know that skin microflora is the microorganisms that live on your skin. Every single person has different skin microflora. That is your mama, your sister, and you, y'all got different skin microflora. It does not matter if you are related. That's why I mash up my lipstick tubes and have them in a palette and I scoop it out with a spatula and place it on whatever I'm using. If I'm using the matte liquid lipsticks, I take that out of the tube, I scoop it onto a clean palette and I'll work from that. Do not double dip if you mashed up your pretty lipsticks all in your kit, that is a great thing. But if you go and you take from that with an applicator and then you need more and you go back and double dip, you have ruined that entire thing of lipstick. I also wanna let you know the top offenders of contaminated makeup products. One, expired products. If you're not sure how long your makeup products last, don't worry, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown right now. Mascara, eye creams, and liquid eyeliners need to be replaced every two to three months. No exception. And that is because the preservatives in the products after a certain amount of time, AKA their expiration date, runs out, which means they are no longer preserved, bacteria multiplies, and it's just downhill from there. In my research, I read that the mascara, eyeliners, and eye cream should be replaced actually a little bit before their expiration date, just because apparently the tissue around the eye is more susceptible to bacteria. So there's that information. Face products should be cycled out every six to 12 months. Lipsticks every 12 months. Body products every one to two years. Also something to look out for as a client and be aware of as a makeup artist, when you are um, sharpening your eyeliner pencils or your lip liner pencils, use a sterilized sharpener. If you're using a dirty sharpener, all you're doing is once again, cross contaminating. So clean those before every single application. I know it seems like a lot, right? It's a lot of work. Another commonly asked question, should I throw my lipstick away after being sick? Yes, 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 yes. Your lip linings are a gateway to your respiratory tract that can lead to an increased risk of infection and illness. Makeup cleanser, a towel, alcohol, a cap or something with a flat edge. I just use the top of a product. Then the palettes that you would like to clean today, this would be anything powder based container for your cleansing product, paper towels, dirty brushes, 
and then we will begin. I'm gonna take the paper towels and set them on top of the towel so my desk does not get wet. I have the solution, and then I'm just dipping my brush into it. Now this solution, you only dip it one quarter of the way into the solution. That way it does not get the glue that's holding the bristles really wet because over time that will cause the bristles to shed. And then again, same process, I'm beginning to clean that foundation brush. And then as I go back and do the second swipe, I start moving down on the paper towel so I'm getting out of that old product and just working the product out. This is a self-drying formula, so just set the brushes aside at this point. And then pick up the alcohol and you are going to spray all your powder-based products. This is bronzer. Make sure you soak it all the way to where the you can tell that it is fully covered. And then begin cleaning the case. If you have a product buildup that's harder to get off, you can use a makeup remover wipe and then go back and clean with alcohol. Then we've got the eyeshadow palettes and I'm just drenching that in alcohol. And then this portion, I'm going to use a paper towel and that top that I was using with the flat edge. This is gonna make cleaning around the eyeshadows super, super easy without making a bigger mess because it does not actually touch the eyeshadow. It is only touching that top casing part. This was a game changer for me, for sure. When cleaning my products, I do also focus on the casing because I just feel like that is an added attribute to my level of professionalism. And I want my clients to feel super comfortable when I pull out products to work on them. Now I'm gonna take that paper towel and get into the crevices. If there are areas you can't reach with this method, you can also opt into Q-tips. Those are super, super helpful for tight areas. Look how beautiful. And then we're gonna go in with another palette. Honestly, a lot of, like, my palettes aren't really dirty because I do clean them on a regular basis. So I'm sorry, these are like the dirtiest palettes that I had. And I'm just using that same technique with the product top wrapped in a paper towel and cleaning the edges really well while that alcohol soaks into the eyeshadow itself. After I wipe everything down with a paper towel, I also wipe with the alcohol onto the mirror. I'm not gonna lie, it does kind of streak the mirror. So I typically go back with some Windex or glass cleaner and clean my mirrors nicely. That's obviously not necessary, but like I said, I just really like a pristine makeup kit. That honestly about covers the uh, cleaning aspect of my kit since we did cover the creams and just obviously making sure you don't cross contaminate. But yes, I really hope this was helpful information. If you have any questions, please drop them below. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial and showing love and support. Please, if you do not do this at the beginning of the tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell notification button if you would like to be notified of future tutorial releases. I'll see you here next time.